Hey Art fans, thanks so much for tuning in. You guys rock. I really appreciate you guys being here today. Thanks so much. Okay, character origins. I think we all know about different characters, how they became who they are. You know, like Spider-Man, bitten by a radioactive spider. And Batman, bitten by a radioactive bat. And... What? No, you said... No, you told me it was a... Uh, Alright, apparently, apparently I was wrong. There's some alleyway thing. Okay, anyway, so... Anyway, characters come from all different types of origin stories. So right now, let's look at a bunch of famous domes in the world. Okay, there's Il Domo in uh, Florence, Italy. And then there's Dome of the Rock in Israel, a big golden dome. There's the um, Thunderdome, Mad Max's, you know, Thunderdome. And then there's, of course, the famous, the very famous, the beloved, the world changing, the earth shaping, Doug Dimmadome. Or the Dimsdale Dimmadome. Doug Dimmadome, the owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome. That's right, Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome. Where did Doug Dimmadome come from? So let's get inside of Doug Dimmadome for a minute. I mean, not really inside. Not like, you know, like, you know Han Solo cut open the Tauntaun and, and Empire Strikes Back and put Luke in. This may smell of that, kid. Don't get inside like that. But let's just go into his psyche for a bit and figure out who Doug Dimmadome is and why he became the way he he is, his Dimmadome-ness. All right, so to start off with, Doug Dimmadome is a character in The Fairly Odd Parents. You guys know him. He's got the, he's got the kind of the, uh, the Texan thing going on. He's got the white suit and got the little string tie. And he's got the, he's got the boots. And he's got the mustache. He's got the hat. And that's Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome. And here's how this character came about. Here's what I love about uh, how characters can just make one appearance in a cartoon. You never think they're going to show up again, and uh, they just become so funny. The audience loves them so much that you have no choice but to put them in more stuff. So we were doing an episode of The Fairly Odd Parents years and years ago, and it was called Nectar of the Odds. And it's an episode where Cosmo's sweaty socks, the sweat from his socks is magic, and Timmy ends up putting it in some lemonade and having a lemonade stand, and people who drink the lemonade uh, get their every wish, all from Cosmo's sweaty magic socks. And so Doug Dimino makes an appearance in Nectar of the Odds. And I believe the way the episode worked was we uh, had something happen at the Dimsdale Demodome. It was, we had, we had come up with the Dimmadome first. So first thing we needed was a name for this stadium. We thought there's a stadium in Dimsdale, what's it called? So here's where names can become very important when you're creating shows, because you want names people can remember, and you want names that are fun. Was it called Dimsdale Stadium? That's lame, we didn't like that name. I happen to like names that are very alliterative. For example, like Peter Parker or Clark Kent. Butch Hartman, no, it doesn't fit. But anyway, if my name was Butch Baxter, I, there was an actor back in the 70s named Bill Bixby. Strong like Bill Bixby. Pixies. All right, so we finally came up with a name for Dimsdale Stadium, and we decided to call it the Dimsdale Dimmadome. It was just kind of a cool name. So what happens in the episode is there's a kid who escapes from Vicky's evil lair underground, and he gets out, he's dying of thirst, he takes some of the magic lemonade, he drinks it, and wishes that his father was there. Suddenly, this huge long car shows up, and this guy pops out with this white Texan suit and this big old white Texan hat, and his name is Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome. We named Doug Dimmadome after the Dimsdale Dimmadome. We just thought it was funny. Instead of naming a stadium after somebody, we named this guy after the stadium. So Doug Dimmadome is there to get his long lost son, Dale Dimmadome. And then uh, basically Timmy has saved Doug Dimmadome's long lost son, Dale. And Doug Dimmadome says to Timmy, anything I can do for you? And all they do is ask for three tickets to Crash Nebula on ice because that's what they wanted to go see in the first place at the Dimmadome. So that's how the story wraps up. But what's cool about the Doug Dimmadome character and persona is this character became so iconic and so awesome. It's become uh, the subject of many, many cool memes out there. And uh, I think that's really awesome. I even saw in a can of Coke recently that um, there, was a, there was a Coke campaign, uh, I think in the last couple years, that said, share a Coke with Betty, share a Coke with Dave, share a Coke with, you know, uh, whatever the person's name was on the, ca on the can of Coke. And it said, share a Coke with Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome. And I thought that was really funny. So thanks very much to whoever did that. Really cool. So Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome, was supposed to be just a one-shot character and became this really, really funny character that we just wanted to use over and over again. We even started taking liberties with his hat. Like every time you'd see Doug Dimmadome, I think the first couple appearances he had kind of a normal size hat. And then there was one storyboard we did where I just wanted to show how tall his hat was and we just pulled way back and you couldn't even see the top of his hat. We were like, it was a very wide shot and his hat just went way off stage. And I'd love to see some artwork from you guys as to just how tall 
Doug Demodome's hat is. I think that'd be kind of cool. How far does it go? Does it go out of our atmosphere? Does it go through outer space? Does it go into another dimension? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you want to do a piece of artwork for Doug Demodome's hat, just hashtag Dimahat, D-I-M-M-A-H-A-T, and we'll find the artwork and we'll post it some other time. I think it'd be kind of cool. Where do you get a hat like that? Maybe I should get a tall hat like that. Hmm. Okay, anyway. All right, so that's the origin of Doug Demodome from Nectar the Odds. His son drank some magic lemonade, his dad shows up, it's Doug Dimodome, and Doug Dimodome then became one of the most iconic characters in the Fairly Odd Parents universe. I love that character, voiced by the great Jim Ward, who also does the voice of Chet Yabetcha. Chet Yabetcha, the uh, newscaster in Fairly Odd Parents. So Jim Ward, amazing voice actor doing both of those voices. So don't ever uh, sell your characters short, guys. They might just go on to be very, very iconic, like Doug Dimodome, or the Dimsdale Dimodome. I even loved adding uh, the word Dimma onto any other word like uh, son that's dim a dumb or son that's dim a dun that's dim a doo doo anything with a d we'd add the word dim in front of that's dim a dim a dim a dang da, 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 diabolical whatever he would say I, I don't know so anyway guys all right thanks so much for watching that's the origin of doug dim a dome what do you guys think of that? You want to hear more origin stories about other characters on fairly odd parents danny phantom anything else i've done also I have a great story about Mr. Crocker, how Mr. Crocker didn't originate with the Fairly Odd Parents. I actually created him for something else. If you want to hear about that, let me know. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, art gives you power. Use it wisely. Hey, heart fans, subscribe here to keep up with me, Danny, Timmy, Dudley, Bunsen, and the Noob Network, my new app full of cartoons, shows, and games. Download it here. Click over here to watch my most recent video and here to start a playlist related to this video. Whoa, check out that awesome fan art. To be featured here, use hashtag heartfanart and tag me. I'm on every social media platform known to man. Cartoon Butch out. Pencil drop.